Lift up your voice and appreciate God. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Appreciate this good God who has been rotting healing in our midst. Rotting amazing signs, amazing wonders. Jesus, we appreciate you. Jesus, we give you praise. Father, we are grateful to you for your healing hand, for your healing power. We say thank you for granting testimonies to the preached word, for confirming healing, restoration and recovery for your people. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the thanks. We give you all the adoration. Reliable God, we say thank you. Dependable God, we say thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In this special healing service, God's healing hand will establish your perfection. God is establishing your recovery. Whatever has tormented you until date, they will expire. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. Whatever is behind that affliction must let you go today. Every medical report that has threatened you, I decree they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every fear of death that has engulfed you, I decree your deliverance in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. You are going home perfected. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. You are going home made whole today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. Congratulations. Please take your seat. God bless you. I read affliction and the afflictor. And in this part two, we are continuing in the same series. Divine health is everybody's right, not some people's right. If a man be in Christ, so you can be in church and not be in Christ. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are become new. When God put man in the garden, he was free from sickness. There was no tormenting of the devil around him. There was no witchcraft. True or false? There was no blood or sprinkling. Man was in total health, divine health. And that is why the redemption of Jesus Christ is taking us back to our original health state. What God wants for you is not healing. What he wants for you is perfect health. I wish above all things that thou may yet prosper and be. Health is a state of well-being. Health is a state of wholeness. Knowing fully well that man will require healing, he made provision for healing. But his ultimate plan for you is sound health, perfect health. I remember one young man, he said, since I started coming to this church, I've stopped taking Panadol. He said, every month I buy a packet of Panadol. So something is dulling his life. But God deliver him from that dulling spirit. Another sister said, 
I used to suffer heart weakness. I cannot trek two poles at a stretch. But after attending service, God healed her of heart palpitation. You may not understand what her palpitation is. <laughs> you understand it? <laughs> Every little thing, the person will be panting as if he has done 400 meters. So God wants us in perfect health. So anything that is tormenting your head, you must be healed today. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Now, like we were made to understand in the first service, before an affliction, what caused it? Let me take for example now, you are in Jaws, and then you travel to Lagos or Abuja, you want to attend the hospital, the first thing they will ask, have you been here before? Do you have a card? What they want to do, they want to know your health history. If you say that this is what is doing you, how did it start? What happened? What they want to do is to know what has been happening to you so that they can know what they can prescribe for you. Are you what I'm saying now? There is no sickness without a cause. Every sickness had a cause. Until, until we know the cause, we can know the cure. Take for example now, somebody is having a um, running stomach. Will you go and give him volume 10? Will you give him volume 10? No. Because the prescription is wrong. What is doing him is not sleepless nights. It's stomach bite. Likewise, we must know the little, little things that makes us fall into affliction. Psalm 107, verse 17. The first one, we are looking at the first one now, Psalm 107, verse 17. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquity, are what? What is fools? Who is a fool? A fool is someone that takes a wrong step without cancer. Fools, because of what? Don't remove the scripture, put it back. Because of their transgression and because of their iniquity are what? Afflicted. So transgression invites affliction. Iniquity invites infirmity. Fools. A fool is one that does not act. He just had. He began to act. You are a fool. If you hear acts, is it right? You didn't inquire. You just go like zombie. So what you are going, you don't even know what caused it. You are afflicted. Fools are afflicted because of stupidity, ignorance. No wonder Bishop Abio said something. Many people suffer not because of the sins they commit, but because of their ignorance, because of their foolishness. Not because that Satan is too powerful, but because they are foolish. So your, your foolishness can lead to your affliction. Why? Because you did not ask about what you wanted to do. You just put head. If that's how you have been living, you will be falling into error every day and opening more doors for the enemy to be afflicting you.
God woke in a cupola one morning and said, Stop eating sugar if you want to remain healthy. He said at that point in time, he loves chocolate. Mommy is laughing. Many of us here like sweet sweet things. Should I tell you something? There is an age that you reach, you don't need it. You are smiling. I know you are a victim. Are you wrong saying now? Stop eating sugar if you want me to heal you. God will heal him, he will go back. He will heal him, he will go back. He will heal him, he will go back. That is foolishness now is damaging your health. Why? Because what you like is killing you. Foolishness. Say with me, foolishness is dangerous. So your affliction can be instrumental because of what? Foolishness. Foolish step. Doing foolish things. You are just catching sickness. For no just cause. You were not supposed to be afflicted. But you went and carried it with your hand. The second thing that can cause affliction... In the first service, I spent more time on talking about um, wrong eating and all that. <laughs> but I will still need to mention it here again. If you are eating wrongly, you will be dying slowly. Wrong eating can make you die slowly. You will just be dying gradually. You know, dying slowly is more dangerous than dying fast. You are just, you are just expiring, you know. Little by little, you are just going. You are just going. Eating wrongly. How many of us here eat pig? Don't be ashamed, don't be ashamed now. From today, stop. Do you know why I say so? It takes longer time to digest. You swallow it in the morning, swallow it in the afternoon, swallow it in the night. That is carryover. Digestion is what? Carryover. The following day you continue. Please, I beg. Say with me, I beg. I beg. Please help me beg them. So that you can live long. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Huh? And some people here are like, I like the one we get fat. I like the one we get fat. <laughs> Give me that one we get fat. Give me that one we get fat. You are dying. You already have excess fat. And you know. <laughs> Excess fat in your body is not giving you, it's not making you look healthy. Is, hey, your body fresh, oh. They are deceiving you. You are dying. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, we've looked at foolishness. Let's look at another aspect of ignorance. Should I tell you something? Ignorance enlarges the scope of oppression of the devil in your life. The more ignorant you are, the wider the room for oppression. So you increase the space the enemy is using to attack you as you are increasing in ignorance. The 
The strength of Satan against any individual is the strength of his ignorance. If you say the enemy is powerful, you are telling, they are confirming that my ignorance is powerful. This devil is, is too strong. Your ignorance is too strong. So as you are damaging your ignorance, you are weakening the devil. The God of his age has blinded the minds of many. Satan succeeds in blinding you so that he can operate well around you. He blinds you more so that he can have a field day. While men slept, the enemy came to Sotas. Another thing that can cause affliction is laziness. Physical laziness. Mental laziness. Spiritual laziness opens the door to affliction. We are not only physically fit, we must also be mentally fit. We must also be spiritually fit. Spiritual fitness talks about spiritual fervency. It said be fervent in the spirit. Any man or woman that is dull, you are dull physically, you are dull mentally, you are dull spiritually, your body is the dumping ground for sickness. Satan will be depositing it for you. While men slept, the enemy came to so us. So refuse dullness. If your mind is active, rubbish will not take place in your mind. I've discovered that. People that have active mind, busy mind at work, don't have time to think rubbish. Go and check it. No wonder they said an adult mind is Satan's workshop. You give a good platform for Satan to work once your mind is not working. But when you have a vision, when you have a tax, you have something that is occupying you, you don't have time for the chaff. You are set to achieve results. You, have you discovered that when you have something occupying you, any small time somebody wastes around you, it's like the person is making you angry. True or false? I have something to do. Why will I be wasting time with this non-entity? You discharge the person quick, quick. Do you know that when you are sound, your body is sound, your mind is sound, your body is sound, eh? There is no room for sickness to take place. Why is Papa not falling sick every time? Answer now, talk. One of the prayer, meeting, writing, reading, traveling. Why is he not always falling sick? We, are you telling me he doesn't rest? He rest too. When the body sings his language, we tell them, I'll be up in the next one hour, 30 minutes. So, we'll go rest. He will refresh and come back. Should I tell you something? If you want to be fit, you must also give your body rest. If you refuse to give your body rest, it will lay you to rest. How many of you have heard some people die of stress? But then kid themselves. Oh. Before stress comes, it will give you signal. Anytime I begin to sense a strain that looks like a headache, I just pack up the book, pack up the laptop. I don't lie down. <laughs> By that, close his eye. I wake up. The head don't correct. Do you know that sleeping helps to regulate your blood pressure? 
But some people don't know. They won't walk, die. If you die, another person go do the walk. Oh, you don't know? Here and now. If you die, the walk continue. <laughs> Are you here? What's that? Hey, can't you see my? I plenty it on my table. Rest too. There was one day, doctor said, told mommy, seize his laptop. Don't allow him to open it to seize his laptop. I rest by force. Please don't joke with it. Some people can slump in their office. Stress kills them. It's not witchcraft. Mumu. <laughs> and I'm sure before it takes place, the body must have been giving you signal. Yes. Hear me? <laughs> Anything that will happen to you, your body must have been giving you sign. I discovered also not all stroke are demonic. Yes. Some are wrong eating. There was somebody it happened to because of it I had to go and I enter, I just started goggling causes of stroke. Causes of high blood pressure. I was reading, reading as if I was going to write a thesis. I now discovered that carelessness can cause it. Please, I beg you, be careful. Stay mentally fit. Stay physically fit. Stay spiritually fit. Now, let me say this. I've talked about rest. How many of us know how many hours we are supposed to rest by per day, every 24 hours. Eh? Between 6 to 8 hours. Between 6 to 8 hours. Don't go and say, eh, I want to walk like Papa. You will soon die. <laughs> you hear me? The Papa you think you know, I know him better than you. Papa obeys the law of rest. If you don't rest, you will be laid to rest. Oh, he was a hard-working man. <laughs> they will attend the burial ceremony. Oh, he, he, this man is a hard worker. He's disciplined. He foolish small. So he died quick. Please, I beg you, obey the law of rest. If I'm on the system or I'm writing and my hand is beginning to shake, the Holy Ghost are giving me signal, close the laptop. Go and rest. Another thing that keeps us spiritually fit, you may not know, prayer. Tell your neighbor, prayer. prayer. Do you know that every time you are praying, you are burning calories. You burn. You are not only generating spiritual fire. <laughs> the fi part of the fire is burning chaff out of your body. I know that one way. Every time you are in prayer, you generate spiritual fire. Part of the fire burns off the chaff. It has to burn chaff. So when you are prayerless, you are inviting sickness. Write it down. Anytime you are prayerless, that's when you begin to drink pan wine in the dream. You begin to eat jello fries and chicken in the dream. Every time you are prayerless, check it. Your slumber state is your most dangerous state. The enemy does not afflict you spiritually until he gets you at a slumber state. But some of you, you have seen yourself praying in the dream. It shows that, it shows that your spirit man is agile. He's super sensitive. In the dream, you say, I bind you. My own is, I kill you.
please, I beg you, spiritual fervency increases your fitness. It helps to increase your fitness. You are fit spiritually. When you are dull, you are in trouble. Witchcraft will be holding meeting upon your head. So most people, dullness, laziness, invite sickness. Now, do you know that if you are used to walking, even in old age, when they tell you come and rest, you are angry. Do you know why? Do you know why? Should I tell you why? If you attempt to rest, sickness say, we have been waiting for you since. But now that you have come back to the village, we have gotten you. Now, can you now see the reason why some people that are used to work, they have refused to retire to the village? Oh, you don't know. You think they are afraid of witches and wizards? It's not witches and wizards matter. They are used to working. And they know that the moment he goes to the village, he won't be doing anything. He will just, every morning he wake up, bring chia, come and be drinking of gogoro, or be drinking tea, and he'll be holding meeting, meeting after meeting. Before you know what's happening, laziness is coming, he's eating the man up. So keep fit. Now, should I tell you something? Walking is the best exercise. You don't need to run. Just walking. As you are walking, every part of your body is experiencing activity. We call it small, small, little things. But it's these small, small things that are killing them. No wonder they say little foxes. These are the little, little foxes that spoils, that destroys. May you not be a victim. Like we said, prayer helps to keep us spiritually fit. Fasting also helps us to last. If you are not giving to fasting, you may not last. Because the band of wickedness around your life will be strong. So anytime they say fast and they say, well, what am I fasting for? The one I did in 21 days is enough. Should I tell you something? That's why they are regrouping to attack you. They regroup to fire back. But when every time you give in to fasting, you keep the enemy at bay. You keep affliction far. Affliction. The enemy far. You keep the enemy far. Why? Because you have suspended your operations. Now, we are still going to take a look at bitterness. Why? Because... The higher senior brother of bitterness is called irritation. And from irritation, it will graduate to murder. So we have murderers in the church. I didn't mention this in the first service, but I want to mention it now. They say level you will grow in bitterness, you will have body order. Permanent. The type that perfume cannot heal. And I've discovered also people that have very bad temperament and bitterness, their body order need a change. Are you wrong saying now? You can even know the person's clothes. If the person pass, you will know that the person pass. We used to have one of our classmates in secondary school then when we were in boarding house. If you perceive his body order, they will ask, did this person pass here now? <laughs> Why? Because he doesn't laugh. He's always moody. Is never, never excited. But it's later that I began to understand that something was doing him. 
Bitterness graduates to irritation. There are some people when they come to church, they are everly irritated. Everly offended. Should I tell you something? If the person you are seeing here is offending you, please change church. Go to another place. There's, winner, there's winners everywhere. You can go to Bukuru or you go to Gare or you go to Hoshe or you go to Kwang or you go to Zanwa. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Huh? Or you go to Angwarukuba or you go to Kabo. But when you reach there, another person will offend you again. That goes to let you know that you are your problem. You are your problem. You know, it's easy to see this person bad, this person bad. You go. Everybody bad, now only you good. Every time you stay and such thoughts begin to occur to you, you will soon die. Do you know why? A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a dry spirit. Bitter people get a dry spirit. And that's why they are easily irritated, cheaply offended. And Jesus said, Woe is he by whom offense come. Yes, there is offense now. They offend me now. Uh -uh. Uh, they don't offend me. People are offending me, even church members. The pastor, they don't offend me. Plenty now. Will I, because of them now, begin, I lose my temper? Or I say I will not do it again? No! It's normal. Should I tell you something? Never you in your lifetime expect everybody to behave normal. Don't expect it. In church, we have literates. We have illiterates. We have semi-literate. And we have mumu. <laughs> so to be expecting everybody to behave, to behave to your standard, you are wasting your time and you will kill yourself. I don't, I don't expect it. I learned that one early. So, this one will behave to a, a particular level. This one will behave. Everybody is behaving according to his level of understanding. That is why, even in the, in the mystery of gang up and gossipers, they know who to meet and they know who will spoil their plan. Go and check it. So, to be expecting everybody to behave normal, man, you will die quick. And that is one of the major problems of some people. They want everybody to behave to their standard. Don't expect it. You can't get it. Even in America. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Huh? It's a very simple thing. It's a very simple thing now. Huh? Okay, now, even among the pastors, the way Tokbe will behave, don't expect Tunde to behave the same way. The way this one will behave, don't expect Clement to behave the same way. The way this one will behave, don't expect this one to behave the same way. Why? Because all of them are at different platforms of understanding. So if you want to use this person to judge this person, ah, you may kill somebody quick. Are you getting it now? That's the reason why you see some people, they'll carry, they'll greet some people, they'll keep malice with this one. Have you heard what this person did to me? <laughs> now only you then they do. Before you know what's happening, message will be going on. If I never do, I'm back. Eh? If I never do, I'm back. We don't set trap for him. He must enter. He must enter. You will fall inside the trap. Please, I beg you. You can live long and live well. You can live long and live well. Like we said in the first service, if you carry three people in your heart, do you know what you are, you are doing? You are now a weightlifter. <laughs> you carry this person, you lock him. You carry this person, you lock him. So your heart is now prison. When they open your heart, they see all the people you have tied rope. <laughs> Iniquity breeds ground for infirmity. You become infamed by the... 
Hear me? Infirmity gets spirit. Be careful. I'm going to mention this before we go to the last one now. Another thing that can cause affliction is lack of vision. Sound health goes with vision. Where there is no vision, the people do what? Where there is no what? So what is killing some people is their blindness. Where there is no vision, the people do what? Perish. I learned something recently from Dr. Kenneth Copeland. He said he has a vision for his next 40 years of health. His next 40 years of the anointing. So, in my little studies, I now discover that as you grow to a particular age, there is how to behave to attract a grace. Now, as you are now, how are you behaving? How you are behaving can it help you to live longer where there is no vision? You must be seeing where you are going. Should I tell you something? Even if God has ordained you to live 120, you need this body to carry you. So you must have vision for this body. Where there is no vision, if you don't have vision for health, you will aspire early. You don't only have vision for wealth. You don't only have vision for house that you will build. You don't only have vision for countries you will travel to. Also have vision for your head. Where there is no vision, the people perish. If you have vision for health, you will regulate your mouth. You will rewind your speedometer. You know some people's mouth talk 150 word per second. Before they will know what they are saying, they say, let me talk. <laughs> some people talk before they think. Wise people think before they talk. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death. Them that eats the fruits. Now you go eat them. Anything you say, you are eating it. You will eat your word. I told somebody one day, you will eat your word. Watch out. And if I tell you, you will eat your word, you will remember all the things you have been saying is waiting for you. If you have a vision for health, he that must live long must keep his tongue from speaking guys. Do you want to live long? Watch your mouth. If not, you will die quick. What kills people is not far. It's here. It's in the tongue. If your mouth, if your words are not controlled, can lead to death. There is a way that cement right unto a man, but the end thereof. I remember one of my um, choral group in one of my locations. She was attacked in the dream. So she came and said, Pastor! I won't die. I won't die. I won't die. I said, get out. Go and die. Go and die. <laughs> As I said, get out. Go and die. <laughs> She started laughing, you know. The person that said, I won't die. I said, she said, you did laugh? I said, yes, now. You know, pray for me. She said, you won't die. Go die. Let me tell you. If you die carelessly, people only think of you for a while. They will remember you again. I won't die, I won't die. Ah, I said, I better go right your way, die quick. 
so that they will share your phone. <laughs> share the money in your bank account. <laughs> you know, the moment you die, that's the first thing they think of. Your ATM card. They will even write to the bank. Some bank staffs were sacked recently now. Somebody passed on, they just used the person ATM. They go to Amado Belewe, they draw. They go to Rapam, they draw. They go to Tafa Belewa, they draw. They go to where's UBA again? Where's UBA again? British! They go to British, they draw. The last one they draw, they nab the 12 people. The 12 location and the people that process the Why I'm saying this is because watch your mouth. Tell your neighbor, watch your mouth. If you don't watch your mouth, you can't watch your life. Part of your vision for health is included. Your mouth is included. Your mouth. Tell your neighbor, your mouth. It's not only what you eat now, it's also what you say. What you say. If you have vision for health, you'll be thinking it. You'll be thinking, eh, the way things are going, eh, are you sure I will live long? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Pastor, let me just die. Thank God I didn't shout for you. But we'll do mouth deliverance for you. You know, there's mouth deliverance. Papa did it in 1997. No? What is killing people more in church is their mouth. It's not which. We have more people afflicted by their mouth. Why? Well, because their vision is so low. So they talk carelessly because they cannot see far. Watch it. If you don't have a vision for health, and you are talking carelessly, you transfer it to your children. But when they know that you are cautious with everything you say, daddy don't used to talk like this. Oh. Daddy don't used to talk like this. They learnt it from you. Have vision for your health. Have vision for your health. When you have vision for your health, it will show in your words. It will show in your thoughts. It will show in the places where you go. Should I tell you something? You can't have vision for health and you are working with people that want to die tomorrow. You don't know that spirits are contagious. When you are working with people that have already signed up to die, you will die with them. May you not die with, with another man's vision. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And lastly, which you must agree, 90% of people afflicted in Africa None of this cost it witchcraft. A high percentage of sickness in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Kenya, in South Africa, witchcraft. It's not only in China you have voodoo, you have voodoo in South Africa. <laughs> Dangerous voodoo. They have another one they call Sangoma. Sangomas are native doctors. In, uh, in South South, they call them Igbe worshippers. How many of you know Igbe? Good. Are you wrong, Zena? These are people that kill stars quick, quick. Hear me? They are the ones that have developed the technology for witchcraft. You know, witchcraft has technology. How will you imagine that they will bring out waterproof from a woman's belly? How did waterproof enter? They use it to wrap the baby. Waterproof, waterproof. The normal waterproof, you know, not. Uh, that is high tech witchcraft. Are 
Ayiran Zena. I remember one of my members in Port Harcourt when I was in Port Harcourt. They fired her injection in the dream. One part of her breast got swollen. I said, come, you are not going to any hospital. I said, take this anointing oil. I said, father, wherever they fire this affliction from, the person that fired it must wear it in 24 hours. Amen. Guess who weared it? The father. The father was now warning her, don't go to that church that you are going to. That man is deceiving you. It's me. Oh. <laughs> Do you know why? Heavy occultism. He has used two of his children. He wanted her to be the next. I said, this time he will go because of you. Yeah. Guess what? The man refused to die. Oh. He left her and targeted the younger brother. Fired that one with accident. It was God's intervention. The boy didn't die. Wickedness is more than real. You hear me? You need to embrace God's word if you must last long. God's word. If you must last long, you must embrace God's word. Oh, I just remembered the head of uh, the technician in my station when I was in Port Harcourt, Eze. The wife gave birth, the kid, the first one, gave birth. All of them didn't last three months. So the wife was now afraid to take him. I said, you must take him. You will deliver. Guess what happened? When she took him, she was administered with communion every day. Say with me every day. And I was prophesying every day. Whoever is the killer of your children will die the moment the baby will arrive. Every day I was prophesying it. Every day I was prophesying it. Guess what? The baby arrived this week. The following week, the person go. It's a mystery. First month pass, baby day. Second month, baby day. Third month, baby day. Fourth month, baby day. When the, the cross fourth month, the man be like, he behaved like a madman. He began to jump. So we have crossed third month. Whoever has been bewitching you, today they will receive their arrow back. Which scripture did Papa read for us yesterday? Is this Zechariah or Zephaniah? Zephaniah 3.17. Let's read it. Now, the reason why we need to read that scripture, there is no affliction without an afflictor. There is no affliction without a sponsor. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. Verse 18 now. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Now look at verse 19. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee. Pause. What is the meaning of that? Whoever is behind your misfortune, God said, I will undo them. Amen. Now, let's break that word undo. I will spoil them. Amen. I will waste them. Amen. I will disgrace them. Amen. To undo means to break. Amen. To undo means to scatter. Amen. To undo means to puncture. Amen. I will undo all that afflict thee. Now, let's match this scripture to give a good spiritual balancing. Zach um, Jeremiah 30. Let's read from verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be what? All thy adversaries, every one of them, 
So whoever has touched you, maybe they touched you four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, vengeance will hit them today. Put the scripture back. Every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be for a spoil. The very thing they did to you, God said, I will do them back. And all that pray on thee, I will give for a prey. To give for a prey means they have tormented you. I will submit them to who will torment them more. Now look at the next verse. For I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they call thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Meaning, nobody can help you. There is help for you here. I say there is help for you here. I say there is help for you here. Until there is the undoing, there is no restoring. God will need to undo them first before he will perfect everything that concerns you. I will undo them. I will spoil them. I will cause them to be devoured. Your enemies are in trouble. Your afflictors, they are in trouble. Whoever subjected you to that evil condition, it will go back upon their head today. I remember that testimony we shared on Friday. A sister was afflicted. Blindness. And the mother that afflicted her carried her for prayer. She didn't know that there is what we call oppression of the spirit. The spirit of God quickened the servant of God. Lock them in a room. Let them begin to pray. I fire back. Every arrow of blindness, I fire back. That was the prayer point. They started praying. This was, I fire back. <laughs> After about uh, 40 minutes or thereabouts, the teen left the daughter and stamped on the mother. She started saying, I can see. The mother started doing like this. Pastor, I can see. Pastor, I can see. They came and opened the door. They said, what of you? <laughs> Whoever fired anything to you. Now, hear me. Whoever has been firing miscarriage, you can miscarry in destiny. What you call bad luck is miscarriage. What you call disappointment is miscarriage. Anyone sponsoring arrow for you, today they will harvest their arrows. Scripture says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish and prosper to the thing wheresoever I send it. Wheresoever I send it. So that sickness is leaving your body. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. That affliction is leaving your body now. Amen. That affliction is leaving your body now. Amen. That affliction is leaving your body now. Amen. I remember one of our sisters in this church. Her friend came to their house. Normal visit. No suspicion. She now saw herself confronting the friend in the dream. She came and reported to me. She cannot confront her. Pastor, I don't think it is true. That's okay. You don't think it is true? I will give you prayer points that will make you know whether it's true or not. Scripture told me that you am at league with the walls of my house. And so my house is not permitted to receive enchantment against me. And whoever I don't permit to stay in this house, the Holy Ghost fire can drive the person away without quarrel. And so I gave her prayer points. 
He started praying. The friend just woke up. I'm tired of this house, Ev. I'm tired of this house. I'm leaving here today. What happened now? Stay small. He said, no, I'm not staying again. No. I'm not staying again. <laughs> I'm not staying again. That was when she now fled up. You have been bewitching my daughter. Is it because I didn't confront you? She started crying. She now said, I'm sorry. How did you know? She said, God showed me in the dream. Some of the people that come to your house, they come to deposit witchcraft. But whoever has come to your house to bewitch you, God will punish them today. I want you to hear this. The word of God carries the cure you are looking for. Jesus said in John 6 verse 63, these words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So every time you speak, you are speaking life. The breath of the Almighty has made me and the spirit of the Lord had given me life. So when God did like this, what he did was to give you life, was to give you health. What he did was to give you perfection. But I want you to hear this. As we begin to pray with this oil, scripture says oil was poured, but the spirit of the Lord came. Oil was poured, but the spirit of the Lord came. As the oil is coming upon you, every chaff and deposit of sickness that the enemy has planted in your body, they will be burnt off. Jesus said, whatsoever my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted. He said his fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge our floor. The Holy Ghost is a searcher. It's a searcher. Do you know why I say it's a searcher? It can search out what is doing you and it will destroy them. It will search out what is doing you and it will destroy them. It will search out what is doing you and it will destroy them. Now let me conclude with this testimony. There was one young man, I think I've shared this testimony before. Do you know what they gave him to eat that he couldn't go to the toilet? Corn. They can use anything to get you. They gave him corn. He ate corn. He couldn't go to the toilet for four days. Now, he has taken the normal projective that uh, pharmacies they prescribe. You know, work. You know, there are some things they can give you. You will purge the tomorrow morning, you know. You know, work. Do you know what they were recommending next? Surgery. I say, so waiting. I say, the word is surgery. So I just brought out one bottle of anointing oil. I said, as you drink this oil, climb the next bike, reach your house. If you stay the next 10 minutes outside, you go shit outside. <laughs> he thought I was joking. <laughs> Merely I blessed the oil. I gave it to him. Holy Ghost, your fan is in your hand. And you will thoroughly purge our floor. I'm born with unquenchable fire. Whatever has suspended the system, as he partake of this oil, let there be a flushing now. Guess what? As he climbed back, rich house. He never enter house. It is not the drop. <laughs> that is speed. Tell your neighbor speed. speed. He started pooping from Saturday morning. The people no finish. Sunday morning, the sister came and was complaining. Pastor, you see the poopoo? <laughs> I asked her. No, be poopoo. He said, when you make it poopoo. <laughs> I say, go and give him communion. If he stop, that the Holy Ghost is cleaning him up. You know the funniest thing? After he finished, the person that did the thing to him asked him, Am I picking? Do? Do? You know which is their wicked? He came to supervise whether the thing is still working. So you are free, eh? You are free, eh? Oh, you are free. You are free. 
<laughs> Which means, oh, so you don't escape, eh? <laughs> Any person planning your captivity, vengeance will hit them today. There is no sickness that followed you here that will go back with you. No sickness. Do you know also fibroid can be fired by witchcraft? Can be fired by witchcraft. But I want you to hear this. Scripture said, whatsoever my heavenly father is God that planted fibroid? As I mean, is he God that planted fibroid? So he must live. I say it must live. The Holy Ghost is not just a refiner's fire. It's a consuming fire. Whatever is creating an obstruction in your health will be taken away today. Rise up to your feet. Do you believe that God will heal you now? I said, do you believe that God will heal you now? That sickness will leave you permanently. Yeah. Scripture says affliction will not rise the second time. There is no permission for a re-entry. It will not come back to your soul, to your spirit, to your body again. Yeah. The Holy Ghost just reminded me something. That power of spirit husband or spirit wife that is attacking you is not of God. It's not a feeling. It's a marine programming. Hear me and hear me well. Scripture said, in case you don't know any scripture, whosoever defiled this temple, God himself shall destroy. Do you know why some people with marital destiny is afflicted? Spirit husband and spirit wife. Whosoever defiled this temple, God himself shall do what? Destroy. You are going to pray, Holy Ghost, whatever God has not planted by your fire, burn it off, destroy it. Hold on. If you are not born again, please come. I want to pray with you. What is doing you is beyond your control. Okay, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. All eyes closed. Or his bow. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, come right now. I'll pray with you. Just come. Take a step forward right now. Jesus can heal you if he can save you. If he can be your Savior, he can be your healer. If you pray that prayer with me, come right now. I want to pray with you. As this oil come, Holy Ghost, let your healing fire destroy every affliction and destroy the afflictor in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your healing fire destroy every affliction and destroy the afflictor in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your healing fire destroy every affliction. Lift up your voice and begin to pray right now. Let your healing fire destroy every affliction. Destroy the afflictor. Lift up your voice and pray. Jesus, no one can come unto you except the Father draw. You are the healer. You are the deliverer. You are the restorer. Rekoshia ketonaze. Bretu sezi gado shaman de lota zekotelo Jesus eko pre liku kapra katazi sezi ya Jerusi aketa in the name of Jesus lift up your voice and pray Jesus by this anointing let your healing fire destroy the affliction destroy the afflictor cry out from the depths of your heart destroy the affliction. Let your healing fire destroy the affliction, destroy the afflictor. I place a demand on your hand. Please cry out. You are coming out now. That moving object in the body is going, is going by fire. 
God is healing somebody of masturbation. Masturbation is leaving you. It's leaving you. Cry out from the depth of your spirit. Jesus, by this anointing, let your healing fire destroy the affliction and destroy the afflictor. Destroy the affliction. Destroy the afflictor. Let your healing fire destroy the affliction. Destroy the afflictor. Reku kepreketo. Zesuze lekukete. Resuze kukapra. Neko karie ketona. Enzuze nike kretosa. Destroy the affliction. Holy Ghost. By your fire. Born of the chaff. Destroy the affliction. Destroy the afflictor. Rekoteria. Jesusa. Pregaderos. Incarada Susene. Jecutelete. Recote pregadizo. Lambre di Josia Gagaga. Recotelia Gagagagaga. Jasonante. Neco calera rocha. Encradilo Susanigara. Recateria Gadaga. Masosala. I cause the roots of high blood pressure. I cause the roots of diabetes. I cause the roots of tuberculosis. I cause the roots. I command it to dry up any power behind miscarriage. I cause that witchcraft. I cause that witchcraft sponsoring red objects for you. Kidney stone, be healed. Masturbation, be healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Whatever power is behind waywardness, be healed right now. Laho sute, mekuka protio, Jesus erikata. Bedwetting, even in the dream you are bedwetting, be healed in the name of Jesus. Lantopa. Jizonande Enkodoros Zekuteria Limbaros Engredus Zekukate Ligedededes Ligodododos La Conteperi En Susanne Kikota Mesusa Preketolia Jesusari Kateria In Kaka Rekuka Preketo In Susolika Kaka Reketeria Gadaga Jesus Zeku Prekita Behil in the name of Jesus In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Put your right hand on your head. Whatever God has not planted, that is eating and devouring you, tormenting you, I decree by this anointing, vengeance, of total destruction. Yeah. Whatever God has not planted that is eating up your head by the vengeance of God, I command your devourer to be devoured. Yeah. I command your devourer to be devoured. Yeah. Whoever is behind the affliction in your body in your womb, in your mind, I decree by the vengeance of God, I command a person to expire. According to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19, anyone afflicting you behind your affliction, I decree by the vengeance of the Holy Ghost. Let them be led to rest. Let the witch swell up and die. The evil hand behind your torment, I command the hand, dry up by fire. Whatever God has not planted, that is discomforting your life, your destiny, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be flushed out now. 
every torment of spirit husband, spirit wife, I decree by the anointing, vengeance of God's destruction upon them now. Any power behind masturbation, you are a sister, you are masturbating. <laughs> I decree by this anointing, God's healing power upon you in the name of Jesus. Any power sponsoring food for you in the dream, afflicting your spiritual head, I destroy the witchcraft altar in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has done against you mysteriously, by the fire of God, I command it uprooted in the name of Jesus. Affliction will not rise the second time again. So shall it be. So shall it be. Somebody has been healed of diabetes. The control over your life is destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. The control over your life is destroyed. So shall it be. In Jesus name we pray. Open your eyes. Turn and follow this man. House will be sickness free. Your office will be sickness free. Your house will not receive any evil visitor. Anyone coming to your house to be with you. Let the God of Oyerego give them madness. Let them catch paralysis. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Anyone planting something in your office so that you will be paralyzed, let their arrow backfire. All through this week, I decree favor for you. Help us will rise up for you. Supply will locate you. Your phone will be receiving good, good alerts this week. If you are saying amen, say better amen. No one of you is permitted to die. You are exempted from accidents. Your name will not answer before any coven. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the goodness together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let the redeem of the Lord say so.